what's up guys welcome back to another video with a is redefined as you can already see the background basically i'm just going to take you through the basis of newton's second law this question was taken from november 2018 you can paper one you can go and check it out this is just physical sciences for grade 12 and even grade 11 learner should be able to do this type of question because there's nothing new okay Basically here we have a block of 8 kg, well that's the mass of the block, 8 kg, and it is placed on a rough horizontal surface, so meaning we have friction on this surface, right? The 8 kg block, which is connected to a 2 kg block by means of light, an extensible string, which is a massless string uh, passing over a light, frictionless pulley, starts sliding from point A as shown, okay so basically that's our initial condition we had the, the block was actually here at first and then it slide it slides to that direction and now it, it, at point b right so basically uh the string and the friction then the friction is actually frictionless and it's messless so you don't have to take those into account that's just for varsity don't stress about that right now cool so looking at the 8 kg block right so let's just try and analyze what's actually happening on the 8 kg block because basically that's what they're going to be asking you uh okay so firstly okay we have friction right this is our friction it's going that direction because the motion of the block is going that direction basically you should remember that so we're dealing with forces here and the force is a vector and the vector has a direction good and then we have weight which is just fg or mg is still the same and then we have a normal force which always acts perpendicular always acts perpendicular to the surface if you have no surface you have no normal force okay cool and you also have our tension here let's just draw tension this is just t for tension it's just 15 degrees from the horizontal right so let me just draw a small set of axes hopefully it's gonna come in handy as we go along with our explanation hopefully right so if you were to try and find the values of all these forces acting on this block what would you do hmm okay cool Firstly here, you should know that your normal force is not equal to mg. Yes, it is not equal to mg. Why though? Because your normal force is only equal to your mg if you don't have any other force which is acting vertically. In this case, we have a tension which is acting at an angle of 15 degrees, meaning we have, uh, remember that this is a vector. As I said, so this is our tension, meaning that we have a y component of the tension and an x component of the tension. So this is just your theta. So basically, this is just ty. Ty is equal to t sine theta. That's just trigonometry. And tx is equal to t cos theta you should be able to do this to resolve your forces into components right so now if our normal force is not equal to the weights then what is the normal force simple you don't have to to to, to stress about that and, and try to cram the whole thing basically what you just do you just say the sum of the forces in the y direction right is equal to zero why zero though because we don't have any motion along the y-axis on this block it is not moving up nor down it is stationary along the vertical axis right so basically f net is zero so now let's write out all the forces acting vertically we have our normal force plus the y component of the tension don't forget the y component of the tension so this is just ty and then we subtract our weight right which is mg and then you get zero meaning the normal force now if you just transpose these you get mg minus ty this will be your normal force 
Wow. Okay. So now let's try and calculate the frictional force and see what happens. And then we'll try and put on the values at the end. But for now, I just want you to see how to get easy marks. Okay. So remember that if frictional force is equal to what? It's equal to mu naught, it's mu, it's mu k, right? It's coefficient of kinetic friction times your normal force, right? And then if they gave you the coefficient of kinetic friction, you just put on the, con the coefficient of kinetic friction, and then your normal force in this case, which is mg minus ty, and your ty is t, it's your ty is t sine theta, right? But what if they didn't give us the the coefficient of kinetic friction, but we're still required to calculate the frictional force? What would we do? Don't stress. You can always sum the forces in the x direction. And you know that your F net, which is the sum of the forces, is equal to your mass times acceleration, which is the definition of Newton's second law. This is just a mathematical description of Newton's second law. Okay. And then we have what? We have, um, okay, we have friction. Uh, I'll just advise you to always, well, it's up to you though. You can always, but what I'd advise you to do is to just take the direction of motion as positive. In this case, the direction of, mo of motion is just going to the right, right? Cool. So... The horizontal forces acting on this block, we have the, the horizontal component of the tension, which is Tx, minus your frictional force is equal to Ma. And they will give you the acceleration. If the acceleration is zero, and then you know that uh, F net will be equal to zero. Or if they tell you that... Um, the, the block is actually moving at constant velocity. If the velocity is constant, then there is no acceleration. Remember that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over what? Over change in time. So if, we, if the velocity is not changing, meaning the velocity final will be equal to the velocity initial divided by the t final minus the t initial. So basically, you're just going to have zero because these two values are the same. You're gonna, you see? So I just wanted to show you why uh, the acceleration is zero when the velocity is constant. Right. And then we move on. So, okay, cool. Tx, Tx is just uh, T. It's just T cos theta minus F is equal to Ma. So basically friction is just equal to it's just T cos theta minus MA. You just transpose the values and you'll find a frictional force as that. That's the frictional force. But now we don't know the value of the tension. Say we're given all the other values, but we don't know the value of T. What do we do? We go back to our system. So if you look at the system here, we have a 2 kg block, which is hanging, right? And the only forces acting on this block, we have a weight and a tension. In this case, we don't have any normal force because, try to answer that question. The reason why we don't have a normal force is because we don't have any surface, right? Yeah, so we, we just have a tension force. Cool. And then for the 2 kg block, the sum of the forces, you can sum them in the y direction, uh, is equal to ma, given the value for the acceleration, and this mass is for the 2 kg, so it's just equal to 2a. So basically here you have what? You always take the direction of motion, so meaning it's going down, meaning you have your weight minus the tension. So meaning t is equal to m g minus 2a right that's the value of the tension and then now you go back 
you substitute the value of t here you just plug in the values you get the value of t and then you sub you sub you sub with the value of t here and you get your frictional force to be that value so basically this is how we get the value of friction and you calculate the tension so basically the ten these two tensions are actually the same because it's acting along the same string right so this is just a pulley and you get more information on that when you varsity again so this tension here is the same as this tension here which is why we use this block basically just use this part to get the value of t and then you take the value of t we plug in into this other block to get maybe the value for the friction or the value for the normal force you see almost everything includes the tension so if you get the tension wrong you should be careful with that and if you can't resolve the tension into components then you'll have another pro problem because you might lose like all of these marks you might lose everything you if you just get the tension wrong so be careful of this of resolving these into components basically this is how you tackle these kind of questions it's just easy marks usually like 17 to 20 marks and you can always just get those 80 percent you can always get 80 percent of those then it's just the explanation part which usually is different but this right here you'll be fine if you understand all of this remember the tension is the same the same tension along the same string same system same tension and 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 i and same acceleration remember that the acceleration is constant throughout the system if this block is accelerating at two meters per second squared this block is also accelerating at what at two meters per second squared the acceleration is the same for both these blocks the acceleration of the same system is the same remember that the tension is the same and the acceleration is the same the reason why i'm emphasizing this is because a lot of people forget about that they usually i'm not sure if they know it but yeah anyways remember that acceleration is the same and the tension is also the same you know what it is like and comment and subscribe same channel same the acceleration is the same the tension is the same the channel is also the same a is redefined come back and watch us again I'm going to see you on another video. Thank you.